Hi, everybody. My name is Brandon Box Higdom. I am the director of forensics at Bentonville High School, and I am also the current serving uh, president of the Arkansas Communication and Theater Arts Association. It's my goal to be able to uh, provide materials for new coaches, uh, returning coaches, uh, to provide a, a source for ideas. And so this is uh, one of the presentations that I give at the beginning of the school year in regards to my classroom and the core values that we uh, as a team and as a family uh, incorporate into uh, my classroom walls. So one of the areas that we uh, talk a lot about is this idea about being a leader inside and outside of my classroom. I think that it's important that not only are our kids uh, re respectful of each other, but also respected in other teachers' classrooms. And so we have gone as far as uh, even creating a student contract that is part of the paperwork that gets signed at the beginning of the year in our um, handbook that we have. Uh, and, and in it, it does say point blank, I will be a leader inside and outside of the debate and forensics classrooms. And one of the areas that we talk to the kids about is the fact that, you know, we are, we are leaving every Friday, you know, Fridays to be able to go to tournament. And I, you know, expect uh, that the kids have the solid grades uh, to be able to go to those tournaments. And if a, if a teacher reaches out to me and says, I'm sorry, so-and-so doesn't have a passing grade and I'm going to need them in my class, what I tell my students is that you're in that class. You're not going to tournament and you will pay the drop fees. And you will also, you know, if you're in a group event, you've got a lot of groveling that you're going to need to do and a lot of apologies to make uh, because you didn't think ahead. And so one of those areas is I always encourage my kids to be proactive, not reactive. This is a huge one. And um, it's just, it's one of those areas where I, I have lived this from, from when I was in school, but a lack of preparation on your behalf does not constitute an emergency on mine. And so if you are not prepared, I can't help you with that. Uh, you have got to come prepared and then I can help you from that point forward. Um, lots of, I, I don't deal well with scrambling. Uh, and so if there are moments where uh, we, you know, have uh, recommendations or scholarship opportunities or things like that, and it's due the day of, that's not going to fly. Uh, I will get to it if I can get to it, but I, I want you to be thinking ahead and being a lot more proactive in regards to your schedule, in regards to your performances, in regards to your rehearsal time, any of those kind of things uh, before uh, so that I don't have to be the one that's scrambling. We also talk a lot about decorum and what that means, uh, not only in my classroom, but also uh in other people's classrooms, on other campuses when we are there. And it's just handling yourself like a like a, an adult. The correct behavior that shows respect and good manners, that we're not walking in and acting a fool uh, and that we're being loud and, and boisterous, that we're trying to be uh, very respectful of what's going on. Um, one of the areas that we always talk to the kids about is the fact that, that our name is on the side of the school bus. And if you, you know, get off the, get off the school bus on a campus and you're loud and, and rowdy and, and all of that, uh, that's a problem because it does reflect back on, on our school, uh, and in turn on our family. I always tell my kids also just to be a good listener, um, there's so many different areas that you can do uh, that just by stopping and listening to what you're being told uh, will will help immensely. I, I think that we are in a time frame of our country where everybody just is trying to talk over each other. And I think if we were to stop and backtrack 
and just take a moment to listen and hear what the other person is saying. Can you imagine how powerful that would be? I think it's a phenomenal thing that we can learn uh, as human beings to just stop and listen to each other. I think it's important to be respectful at all times. Uh, I, I think that it's also really, really important to remember that that it's it's bigger than just you now. When you walk into my classroom, you have now become part of a team. You have become part of a family and you need to stop thinking here and think here because it's bigger than you now. And the more respectful that you can be of parents, of, of friends, of family, of teachers, of fellow students, of fellow teammates, um, and be thoughtful in how you interact with them uh, will, will mean a lot. I think it's also important to, to be humble. Um, there, there is nothing better than, uh, than winning, okay? You're going to learn so much more from lose, losing. Uh, and, and you have to be kind and humble even when you lose. Uh, because, or even when you're winning, because of the fact that if you're winning, somebody else has had to lose. And if the, if the team is a large team, somebody is going to have some hurt feelings. And you've got to be very thoughtful about that. Uh, and, and, and it's just, it's just a good human being ship is to be humble, um, and not fake, be genuine and be, and be truthful. Uh, it's okay to relish in your successes, but it's also, uh, you need to be thoughtful about how you present yourself and, and be kind because you may be excited about the fact that you won, uh, but somebody else may not have had that, that same ample opportunity. I want my students to be professional at all times, in all moments, and at all places. It's, 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 bigger, it's a bigger picture now. You represent the family, uh, which is the debate and forensics team, and it's important to remember that. Uh, we talk about professionalism at tournaments. Uh, I will even be presenting... Um, our presentation in regards to what professional tournament dress looks like uh, and how that works so that you guys can use that uh, in your programs if you so choose. Uh, but but we, we, we have a tone that we need to set and, and that it is professional from the very beginning when you walk in, that it is a presence uh, that is there, that is an expectation. As I was digging through some of this stuff, I found it very interesting uh, that we talk about the golden rule, treat people the way that you want to be treated. As I was digging in regards to these areas of being courteous and being gracious, I suddenly came upon the platinum rule. And I was, I was perplexed because I'd never heard of the platinum rule. And, and it's, it's literally treat people how they want to be treated. And the difference is, is that the golden rule is forcing what you think these people want to be treated as, whereas treating people the way they want to be treated forces you to stop to ask the questions and to listen to their responses so that you know how they would prefer to be treated. Um, and, and thinking about that mindset, people want to be treated how they want to be treated, not necessarily how you want to treat them. So you got to do unto others as they would like to be done unto. It, it, that mindset is, is kind of mind blowing to me uh, in regards to uh, the difference between the two. Um, it's a it's it's a huge alternative, uh, and, it, and it really shifts from this is what I want to do to treat other people's to you know like uh, what I want to do to say that I'm listening to you. This is the golden rule. No, it, it needs to be. Let me first understand by listening to what you want, and then I will try to give it to you. And that is the platinum. Uh, I want you to be pers to, to be forward thinking, to be consistent. To, to experience perseverance. And I think that there is no better example 
in American society than the actor Denzel Washington. And this video uh, that I'll share in the PowerPoint is so powerful. Uh, he talks in one of his graduation speeches that uh, he talks about perseverance and, 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 and moving forward with strong, persistent, consistent movement. Um, and it is so powerful if, if you will just take a few moments to be able to listen to it. I want my students to end up being self-sufficient. When you first come into my classroom, it's just not going to happen and that's okay. But taking, taking the initiative to be able to ask questions is so important. Um, and then once you get acclimated to my classroom, I expect you to be self-sufficient. I expect you that once you've received your training, that you kind of understand what's going on. And that if you, and that if you don't understand something, you're asking me, you're asking a mentor, you're asking a fellow classmate uh, as to how um, uh just, you know, to be able to, to be uh, self-sufficient in a classroom like this. I want my students to also be thoughtful. And I think that there are uh, some many powerful things that this, uh, that this woman talks about on this TED Talk in regards to mindfulness and being thoughtful for others, that I think there's so many different things that we can learn uh, to, in today's society. Uh, the whole pay it forward aspect uh, is so important. I think also uh, mindfulness is, is an area where we uh, struggle. Um, it's a type of meditation in which you just focus on, on what you are sensing and you are feeling uh, without any kind of judgment or, or superseding any kind of ideas. It, it's, it's an idea of breathing, uh, focusing your breathing. It is allowing yourself to calm and relax, and it will also help you to reduce stress. I did also provide a link uh, to some uh, mindful practices that are super, super powerful uh, that you can use as well. I think it's also important to be kind this was uh, one of the things that greeted our guests at my husband and, and my wedding uh, back in 2015. Um, and it's, it's kind of a mantra of mine that, that wear love everywhere you go. I think it's so important. Um, and, and, and in today's society, I think it's, it's so important that we, we come from kindness first uh, and, and working our way through uh, what that means and how we can do it. And so uh, this young man did a, did a TED talk up in West Vancouver, and he talks about being different and that we're all different and it's okay. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be uh, kind of quirky and, and that's awesome. And so if you get the chance to kind of watch this one too, it's, it's really, really good. Um, the most important thing that I ask of my students is that, that you just come into, into my classroom and just be you. Be that fabulous, weird, messy, emotional, passionate, excited, you know, depressed, kind, angry, solid, uh, crazy, cool, uh, quiet human. Okay, and then just honor it. We're not all going to be in the same uh, in the same mode of, of emotion every day. And it's important to come in, take a few moments to assess where you're at for that day, take a deep breath and then honor that. And, and being able to communicate it too is really, really important. Um, you know, and to say to someone, I'm just not feeling, I'm just kind of tired today. I've had a really rough couple of days and I just need to, um, I, I just need some time. I need some quiet time. Uh, and, and, and then honor that, honor it. Okay. We're all, we're all not going to be in the same mode and, and wherever you are at that given time, I just want you to honor it. Every day that my kids leave my classroom, they pass by these three panels on my door. And it's my sincerest hope that, uh, each, uh, each crew, each crew that comes in and goes out of my classroom remembers that I expect, I want them to be safe. Uh, don't make any crazy, you know, crazy, stupid uh, decisions that are going to, that are going to harm, be harmful to you. Uh, do not quit until you are proud. Uh, and that's a big one. Uh, because a lot of times I will say, are you proud of your performance? And if they say no, I say, well, then just don't quit. Keep working on it. Uh, and to know that you're loved. 
uh, I think that it's it's important that that my students understand that that they are loved and uh, and that they can come to me with anything. Uh, and so it's my hope that uh, some of these uh, uh, things will that will help benefit you in your classrooms uh, in the future. Uh, obviously, there's more to it uh, than just these, uh, but these are the ones that I cover in my first first couple of days of class uh, so that kids can kind of understand where I come from as a teacher uh, and who I'm going to be throughout the year in regards to uh, a confidant, as well as a mentor, as well as their teacher, as well as their coach. Uh, so uh, it, it, I hope that this has been valuable for you. And I thank you so much for your time today.